I have established here in this shop 400 deep substrate balanced aquariums. Two to 300 species of fish set up eight years ago with dirt and sand. They have never been changed. It's never been cleaned. The only thing we've ever done is put plants in. Come right on in. You're at Father Fish. Well, hello again. This is Father Fish. I'm following up on a video we just completed explaining Diana Wallstead's planted aquarium, dirted aquarium. In that video, we described two issues that remain at the end of the book essentially unresolved. One is the effect of anaerobic soil on the water column. The second is the duration of nutritional value in the substrate, which she restricted or limited to approximately one year. So those are the issues that we took up as we began to apply the techniques and the research that Diana Wallstead provides us. We started this process a little more than 10 years ago, nearly 15 years ago, before the final draft of her book. The third issue was published. The application of the dirted tank has been so slow in being taken up that it remains even today, 20 years later, controversial and minimally applied throughout the industry. The reasons for this are very simple. The industry is driven primarily by mercantilists, by manufacturers and retailers. There is very little required of a manufactured nature to do a dirted tank, very little indeed. Some dirt, some soil, some sand, some additives, and that about lets it out. There's nothing mechanical needed particularly. There's nothing that the water needs to be treated with other than the removal of chlorine. There's really very little that's economically driven or fiscally driven that would cause a manufacturer or a retailer to promote this system. So it remains up to the hobbyists to promote the system. And that's very much what I'm about here in this shop. This is a hobby shop. In point of fact, this shop of approximately 400 aquariums is, it's a hobby shop. It's little more than that. It's my fish room. It's a place you can come into, you can walk around, and you can search for things that you may be interested in. There are probably two to 300 species of fish in all these tanks. For a novice walking through, they might see five or 10, maybe a bit more. Most remain hidden when you walk by, hidden behind the plants that are living in each of the tanks. So what I have established here in this shop is approximately 400 deep substrate balanced aquariums. And they're at all different levels of effectiveness. Well, they're all about the same age. There are some newer. I'm always creating a few new ones. So there's a difference in age. Some are more effective than others. Some have been here for 10 years and are growing plants as luxuriantly today as they did the first month they were set up. So here's what I would like to do. I would like to take the two issues and I'm going to add to that a third. And the third one is food, fish food. I'm going to take those three issues, food, the anaerobic quality of the dirt and the difficulty of maintaining anaerobics in a water column. And number three, the duration of the nutrient value of the soil. I'm going to show you what I do, what I have developed as a system for dealing with those three issues. 
Now, I've got on the table here a representation of the three things that I use. Dirt, supplements, and sand. I start with mud. I put water in the dirt. I add supplements to it. The supplements include items, approximately a dozen different items. Uh, among them are iron oxide, which is a good example of an element that I include that is not able to be taken up by the plants in the first year or two of it being in the substrate. So that element does not begin to become accessible and available, is not chelated, softened, if you will, broken down to the point where plant roots can take it up. There are other items like that that I put in the substrate. And the supplements that I add will be described in detail as they are in several other of my videos. I do supplements as a way of overcoming the restrictions that the dirt alone provides by virtue of it becoming depleted after about a year. So I start with mud. And I put approximately one inch of mud in the tank. I start with mud, about an inch deep. That's all that's really critical is to have an inch. You can do more, you can do two inches. In the tank behind me, I have six inches. That's a 200 gallon tank that's been set up for 10 years. That tank is growing plants today at a faster rate than it was when it was first set up. So far from it being depleted, it is richer today than it was initially. If I have time, I'll mention a little more about that. Suffice it to say, it is a healthier tank today and a more balanced tank and a tank more capable of producing plant growth than it did in its first year or two or three uh, of its existence. So we have added supplements to dirt. We've made mud out of it and put it in the bottom of the tank. The next step is to pour sand over the dirt. I like to do a minimum of two inches and I get that number straight out of Waldstead. Now, she used and recommended gravel. I do not use gravel. In fact, I really oppose the use of gravel simply because water flows through it too quickly. Now here's the issue. The problem she discovered in the book that the book left unresolved was the issue of anaerobics and the difficulty of maintaining an anaerobic environment in the water column. Without this sand, the dirt is exposed to the water. If you have a little gravel covering it, just enough to hold the dirt down, the dirt is still exposed to the water. The sand reduces water flow into that substrate sufficient to essentially stop the flow of water at about two inches deep. At that level, it becomes anaerobic. Anything below that two inches is anaerobic. Now, one of the complaints about this system is that it takes a very long time for detrius, for waste, to precipitate into the sand and to flow down in it, into the substrate. And that is absolutely true. It takes at least a year for the mulch that, or the uh, mulm that precipitates into the sand to reach the bottom, to reach into the substrate, to get down into that lower level at least a year. That means if your tank is set up for more than a year, the mulm and waste that was put in there originally is flowing through and reaching the substrate. By two years, 
it's inculcated into the substrate. By three years, you have substrate breaking down and that environment becoming a richer and stronger one. Now, the next phase of this to understand is the function of plants. And the plants are the key. They're the key to the whole system. They're the reason the system exists, to create an environment in which plants can grow. When I put plants into this brand new system, I do not push them all the way down into the dirt. If I did that, the roots would burn off. It's much too intense, much too powerful, much too raw for the plants to be able to survive. I put the plants one inch into the sand, the roots of the plants. The roots then can spread, can get down close to that dirt layer and begin taking up nutrition. In the process of doing that, the roots are also aerating. They're moving things around. They're creating anaerobics because that's what roots do. They create anaerobics. And so by over a period of time, by them getting deeper and by this soil sand system, assimilating and breaking down and becoming more gentle and becoming richer, the roots are able to take up more nutrition. But it takes time. It takes a long time. It takes a year, two years, three years. By the time this tank is three to four years old, I've got a couple of them. One is over here, the tank that we're seeing cutting across that has the peacocks in it. That tank has been set up for 10 years. It has at least 10 inches of sand. Now, I did not put soil in the bottom of that tank. I created it for very large fish, initially Central American cichlids, that were tearing things up. So I didn't try to put dirt in. Now, 10 years later, you can see the strata of soil as it's developed through the, the, the years of waste and mold product going down into it, such that these plants, aside from them being chewed up by the fish, because some of them are, the plants do very well in it. And more importantly, the tank stays balanced. We have a filter in it that, uh, that cycles the water and does pull out a certain amount of waste, but we have never gone in and stirred up this bottom or changed it or made any significant uh, change to it in 10 years. Similarly with the tank behind me, this is a 200 gallon with about eight inches of substrate. This tank has been set up similarly for 10 years. All the plants that are in it are growing and frankly, they're growing like weeds. They grow at a, at a faster rate today than they did in the first few years of the tank's life. We have all manner of fish in it. These are all more gentle fish. They're South American cichlids. We also include some Africans, such as Credensis, um, some of the Tanganyikas in this tank as well. There are some sharks, you'll see. So a good variety of fish. We have discus, angels, uh, severum, rams, a variety of fish in here. The tank never gets water change. I shouldn't say never. About once a year, we do a 50% water change. This is very hard, very alkaline water. It runs 8 OTH with a hardness of above 250 ppm and extraordinarily stable. We do not lose fish in it. We do not, and this is the third item, even for a tank like this, we rarely feed the fish, except for the bigger ones. The little fish don't get fed. Let's look for a moment behind me at some of these tanks. These are tanks that were set up again about eight years ago with dirt and sand. They have never been changed. They've never been cleaned. The only thing we've ever done is put plants in. 
and we sell plants out of these. We also sell fish out of these. So plants and fish are kind of moving through these tanks. The substrate is sufficient, however, to maintain the health of the system. We've got probably a hundred tanks like this set up. Some of them are on open systems with a sump in the back that's doing water changes to the really a much larger volume of water. But we also have a number of tanks that are standalone tanks with the same system set up. I did want to say one more thing about food. The, the little fish in these tanks rarely if ever get fed. The tank produces enough light, enough food in the form of algae, microscopic fauna that the little fish are able to feed on. So it's a, a genuinely balanced environment. We do providing resources for every living thing in it. Well, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for hanging in. This has been kind of a long video and I apologize for that, but there was quite a lot to get through. Thank you again for coming. See you on YouTube. God bless.